Okay, guys, here we are. Girdwood, Alaska. Dude, we're like back Risk. there. Look how thick this forest is. It's so beautiful. Ooh, look at that. There's a glacier right up there. There's glaciers all around here. In fact, we'll probably be able to see some glaciers from this homestead. This is a rugged, rugged place. The Rainies are deep in Alaska's famed Chugash Mountains, five miles outside tiny Girdwood, Alaska. First founded by gold seekers who braved the region's treacherous terrain in search of fortune, more than a century later, these mountains remain isolated and untamed. Trying to carve out their own life in this unforgiving wilderness, the Kramers. My name is Curtis Kramer. I'm 44 years old. This is my wife, Emma Kramer, and she is 44 years old also. I'm 43. Oh, oops. My name is Naya Kramer. I just turned 19. My parents have been living off the grid and raised me off the grid for the last 20 years about. But after my parents lost their business this last year, we realized that our homestead is definitely not self-sufficient. And we still need an income to buy certain things, stuff for the house, food. We really don't have a very good food supply. To feed my family, it's gonna be a struggle. The garden that we have going right now, it can't sustain us throughout the winter for sure. Curtis is able to fish in Prince William Sound in Cordova. But salmon season's gone in August. We tried to do chickens up here, but unfortunately the uh, neighborhood predators actually got after him. Both of us have always wanted to be self-sufficient. My dream would be that my parents would be self-sufficient, but they just don't really know where to start from at this point. So we definitely need that help. I do worry about making it through this winter. It's definitely going to be a struggle for us. I'm really scared about losing everything my parents have ever worked for, so we definitely need the Rainey's help. Before we build anything down here, we got to think about that road. But I can't work on it without that neighbor's permission. So uh, we need to meet this guy because I'm thinking I'm going to get an excavator and I want to scratch some of those big boulders in that granite and see if we can get a switch back or widen it or do something to benefit them. There's what I found out. Walking around with Rowan and Naya, they used to have chickens back in the day. They said all their chickens got ate by bears. So it's kind of a sketchy place to raise livestock. Are you suggesting that we bring chickens back? I think we need a predator-proof chicken coop. All right, we're good. You guys moved this window over? <laughs> yeah, we're changing up the place. <laughs> I've built a lot of chicken coops. This chicken coop is going to be perfect for this homestead. This is a children's treehouse. There is joy and wonder and good vibes just baked into the walls. And I think that's going to transfer into these chickens, and we might have the happiest chickens I've ever seen. So you're taking this off, and then we're going to put a floor on it? No to all. No. <laughs> no. I'll show you, Rowan and Naya. They're starting to really see the vision and progress ahead. I'm really excited to repurpose the treehouse and give it a new life as a chicken coop because my parents really don't have anything to fall back on for a food supply. This platform is the old floor. I'm not going to use this. We're going to raise the floor for the chickens up to here. But I want to take it a step further. There needs to be a wall framed here and we're gonna have all the nesting boxes and everything on this wall so that when you guys wanna come through the drive through chicken shack, you can come into a nice little dry area, open up the flap, grab whatever eggs you need, shut it, and then go all along your little merry little way. With only 24 hours until the Rainies have to leave to rescue another homestead. Are you excited about getting chickens? <laughs> Matt, Melanie, and the Kramer children, Rowan and Naya, put the finishing touches on their treehouse turned predator-proof chicken coop. Exciting! It's a good chicken coop, guys. It is. Compared to our old treehouse, it's, it's doing pretty good. We got the chicken coop pretty much done. I'm putting the last touches. Two layers of defense, different wire, different sizes. Perfect. It's gonna be hard for a critter to get through. Done! I think it looks pretty good. All we need to do now is move the chickens in the coop, give them some food and water, and this thing will be totally completed. 
The chickens are here. The chickens are here. Pull forward a little bit. Right here. It's good. Wow. Wow. Oh, nice. Look at these chickens. Hi guys. Hello, How sir. We brought in our friend Don. He raises chickens for a living. He is the go-to. And Don has given us really the most hardy, tough chickens that can survive this really brutal, long girdwood winter. And these chickens are gonna provide a lot of food and a lot of protein for this homestead. She's so cool. This is a Novagen. Oh, wow. And she'll start laying in a week or so. And what? then this is a color pack. <laughs> it's got like a mohawk or she. The breeds that showed up here today are super good for cold weather, and in Alaska, that's really important. The color and pack. And they're particularly cold hardy, because see, they're a yeah. little yeah. mohawk on top of their comb. They've got very small waddles. They should do really well for you. Dude, this Great. is awesome. Thank you. We're got here, this. I want to take a quick peek. I want to see which one I'm going to name. Seven days ago, the Kramer homestead was without livestock or a reliable source of winter protein. Now, using a recycled children's treehouse as a predator-proof chicken coop, the family will have access to a near constant source of food right at their doorstep. That's awesome what Matt did at the chicken coop. To see what he came up with, I love how he put it together. They're really cool. The black ones are beautiful. I've never had one like that. We can cruise by in the winter time with our snow machines, open it up, check for eggs. Super cool, man. I'm excited. And all these varieties lay about 300 eggs a year for their first uh, two years. Dark chocolate oh, brown eggs. Oh, wow. You're lucky. I've yep. never had Father. that kind. Look at her iridescent feathers. There you go. So Don't be afraid. Cool. It is so exciting to see the chickens moved into the coop, and like they seem happy. And you know, now it's just a matter of food and water and checking on the eggs. Nice. I, na I named him. Aw, what'd you name him? Ski Doo. Aww, if they're all hers. <laughs> that we call our him. They're gonna be a girl or girl uh, name. Ski yeah. could, that could be a girl Ski Doo is a girl. Ski Doo is? Yeah. Well, heck. You guys have chickens. Yeah, no. Now you got chickens yeah. here. It's gonna be a major help. If we're getting eggs out regularly, that's gonna be awesome. We got six of them. Do that math. That's <laughs> it's awesome. A lot of eggs. Yeah. It's great that we now have this food source to fall back on. They're already checking the nesting yeah. boxes out, which is That's pretty great. cool. The chicken coop is definitely my favorite part of the property. I think we did really good with that, especially because it went for my janky treehouse. The whole entire chicken coop is cool. Right on. Well, thank you so much. All right, good meeting you. Thanks for the nice delivery, too. Thanks, man. Have a safe drive back. I will. Thank you.